This is Channel 7 Saturday Action News with Detroit's First News Team. Good evening, everyone. David has done it again. Goliath is dead. Michigan State has upset number one ranked Michigan in college football. It was billed as the state's civil war. And as many of you just saw here on Channel 7, this one was really a battle. We have two live reports from Ann Arbor about the big game. We begin our coverage with Don Shane, who joins us now in this live action camera report. Don? All right, Frank, thank you very much. Uh, what an incredible finish, one of the best finishes without doubt to a Michigan-Michigan State game. And I, you can imagine the Michigan coaches at this point are going to complain over and over and over again about the problems and what happened to Desmond Howard in the end zone on that two-point conversion attempt when he grabbed his jersey and got thrown down into the end zone. They thought he had it, of course. They thought there was interference. It was not called. Now, the other thing is you got to give Michigan State credit for playing one of the best games they have played this year. George Perlis, tears of joy coming down his cheeks as he came up the tunnel into the locker room. These are some pretty happy Michigan State players. Is uh, the curse, I guess, the jinx on Michigan. Every time they get ranked number one, something bad seems to happen to them, and they lose today to Michigan State in an absolute thriller, 28 to 27. We'll have all the interviews for you from the locker room, some stuff we shot on the field coming up in sports just a little bit later on. I'm Don Shane, live in Ann Arbor. Frank, back to you. Thanks. All right, thanks, Don. The last time Michigan State beat Michigan was in 1987 when the Spartans came away with a 17 to 11 victory. Michigan State also went on to win the Big Ten title that year and then defeated Southern Cal in the Rose Bowl. Cheryl? Tailgating before the big game today had all the usual ingredients, food, music, and fun. But the one thing that should have been missing was booze. And that's because the school board of Ann Arbor has now banned alcohol on public school property where some of the parties happen. The University of Michigan, Michigan State University matchup was the first test for this new ordinance. And as Channel 7's Bill Proctor shows us in this live action camera report from Ann Arbor, not everybody followed the rules. Bill? As you know, uh, this kind of thing is a party from the very beginning, regardless of what team happens to win or lose, Cheryl. These folks uh, start very early. And yes, alcohol is in fact a part of the picture. Well, the city of Ann Arbor, and I guess the school board in particular, is under the impression that that may send a bad signal to the kids. So they are enforcing an ordinance on their property in particular. The city of Ann Arbor may be considering doing even more. Here's more on the story. Is it on? Yes. There is no doubt alcohol consumption is high on game day. The hundreds of tailgate parties are a testimony to that. It's on Ann Arbor Public School property, however, on the Pioneer High property in particular near the stadium, that booze is prohibited. You'll find mixed feelings about that prohibition since the liquor and beer flow freely on lots all around. This is, this is U of M, U of M students, and, you know, people coming back, they should be able to drink. No, I don't think it should be enforced, and no, it, to me it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Unless someone comes up and says, you can't drink in this parking lot, then I think we'd leave. For Ann Arbor police, the concern is city parking structures where underage drinking is a problem 52 weeks out of the year. That's one of our primary concerns, and as a result of that, um, the U of M football Saturday game days isn't uh, particularly connected with that problem. So far, the police don't perceive a problem after the game. That is when a lot of these folks get in their cars and head home. Yes, there are some arrests, some tickets issued for driving and drinking. But so far, they say this year, no real problem at all. Bill Proctor reporting live from Ann Arbor. Thanks very much, Bill. That's good. People who violate the ban could get up to 90 days in jail and a $100 fine if convicted on the misdemeanor charge. Frank? Coming up, uh, some say it's in poor taste. We're going to go to sports now. Sports We're gonna... now. Okay. <laughs> Got a page out of order here. That's okay. That's all right. Jay, what an exciting day in college football. Welcome to WXYZ TV, Frank, and much. welcome to the Big Ten. This is what it's all about. And, and Heart Attack City, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Can't have, got to have a good pumper, let me tell you. Good evening, everybody. What a game. Michigan against Michigan State. It comes down to a two-point conversion and controversy. Desmond Howard can't hold on in the end zone. He was clearly held by MSU's Eddie Brown. No call by the official. 
Michigan gets the onside kick. A last-second pass is intercepted by Brown. Can you spell upset boys and girls? The Spartans can. They shock number one ranked Michigan, 28 to 27. MSU's Chuck Buller with some battle scars. It was that type of game. We open it up in the first quarter. Plenty of excitement from the very beginning. Elvis Gerback pumps and then sends it to a diving Derek Alexander. Michigan is up 7-0. Back come the Spartans as quarterback Dan Enos takes it in himself. Eight-yard score. We're tied at 7. John Vaughn with 90 yards in the first quarter alone. 42 on this carry as he has the Wolverines looking for another score. But Michigan State will have none of it. Fourth and six situation coming up on the two-yard line. Vaughn tries the right side and is stopped. Critical play for both teams. Got another one for you. Just seconds left in the first half. Enos will be in trouble. Martin Davis makes the hit. Chris Hutcherson with the interception at the 36 of MSU. Ten seconds left. Enough time for Gerback to connect with Desmond Howard at the 12. Michigan will go for the field goal. But watch as J.D. Carlson hooks it left from 28 yards, seven all at the half. We take you now to the third quarter. Vaughn will try the right side, will go down, fumbles the ball. The Zebras ruled that he was down, and let me tell you, that doesn't sit well with George Perlis. He is livid. Very next play, Jared Bunch. One yard touchdown, 14-7 Michigan in the third. MSU, though, comes right back. Dan Enos to Highland Hickson, four-yard TD. We're tied at 14 in the third. MSU on the march again. Hickson, check out this run. Up the middle, 26 yards, bouncing off would-be tacklers, 21-14 MSU. But look at the ensuing kickoff. Desmond Howard, big hole there. And then a convoy of blockers, four of them. Cuts across the grain, he is gone. 95 yards, and we're going to be tied. 21 all in the fourth. MSU now with this 11-yard touchdown by Tico Duckett. Spartans up 28-21. Michigan is not done. Gerbach comes back. He finds Derek Alexander. Great catch by him. 28-27. What are you going to do? You got to go for two. That's right. Gary Moeller does. Now, keep an eye on Desmond Howard. Bottom of your screen there, Eddie Brown with the tackle, the miss, no call, the controversy we were talking about. Don Shane now is standing by live in Ann Arbor with more on today's thrilling game. Don, I know they're upset by the call. You've got more. Well, you can be guaranteed about that, that they're going to complain about that until now to the end of the year, but Gary Moeller will probably say, forget it. There's nothing he could do. The game is over. There were a number of controversial calls in this game that could have gone either way and affected the outcome, but that one certainly did, and give Gary Moeller some credit. He went for two, knowing that the Big Ten Championship maybe is on the line, the National Championship maybe on the line. You certainly like to see him do that, but that don't take anything away from the game that Dan Enos and Hickson and George Perlis' gang played today. But they played one marvelous football game, and when this thing was over, I rushed onto the field and talked with Dan Enos about this big upset. I feel great. I'm really excited. I just, I, I can't tell you how good I feel. You guys all along obviously felt as if you could beat these guys. Hey, nobody thought we could win. All the media thought we were going to lose. We just, we, we're a family. We don't care what nobody thinks about us. An absolutely crazy scene on the field, but the Spartans with the big upset today, and we'll have the complete locker room story for you tonight at 11 o'clock. I'm Don Shane reporting live from Ann Arbor. Jay, back to you. All right. Anyway, you look at it, Michigan certainly had his chances, that's for sure, Don.